Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss four factors that affect the rate of diffusion, or as we'll call it now, diffusion rate. And this is just how fast does diffusion occur. Now remember what diffusion is. Diffusion is the movement of particles, such as ions or small molecules, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And so when we talk about that diffusion rate, if the diffusion rate is higher, that movement of those particles is faster. If the diffusion rate is slower, then that movement of those particles from high to low concentration is slower. Okay. The first factor that we're going to talk about that affects diffusion rate is molecular weight. Okay, so molecular weight is basically a measure of the mass of a substance. Okay. So let's use an analogy right here before we get into the molecular side of this. We've got the same person right here, and in one case, he is moving a small block. Okay? In the case down here, he's moving a much larger block. We're to assume that that red block down here is heavier. Okay? And if this man in this two different states uses the exact same force on each of these blocks, which one is he going to be able to move farther using the same amount of force? Well, logically speaking, he should be able to move this small blue block farther because it's lighter, so he's going to be able to accelerate it more quickly and it's going to move farther, and overall it's going to move faster. Okay, So you see he moves it farther because it moves faster. The guy down here is using the exact same amount of force as the one up on the top, but using the same amount of force on a much heavier block, like this red one, he's not going to be able to move it as quickly, and so it's not going to travel as far. And that results from the fact that it's not moving as quickly. So one thing we could say is that if we're pushing a block, the heavier the block, the lower its rate of movement. So they have an inverse relationship. And this analogy works really well for explaining how different particles diffuse with different molecular weights. So the smaller block is representative of a substance with a lower molecular weight. And so these substances with lower molecular weights are going to diffuse much faster, relatively speaking. So lower molecular weight actually equals a higher diffusion rate. If we have a substance that is larger, meaning has a higher molecular weight or greater molecular weight, it's going to have a lower rate of diffusion. So it's going to diffuse more slowly. And out of the four factors, this is the only one that we're going to talk about in this video that has an inverse relationship where when one increases, the other decreases and vice versa. So the key here is higher molecular weight, lower diffusion rate. Lower molecular weight, higher diffusion rate. And different particles or different molecules have different molecular weights. Here's kind of a question just to illustrate the point. Which molecule shown here has the greatest diffusion rate? So A, we have a molecule of carbon dioxide. This has a molecular weight of 44 Daltons. Actually, Dalton is a type of unit that we use to describe molecular weight. Down here is a ribosome. Ribosomes have just over a molecular weight of 3 million Daltons. So I purposely put this here so there's a very large discrepancy. Which of these has the greatest diffusion rate? Well, the greatest diffusion rate would be associated with the smallest particle. The smallest one is obviously carbon dioxide here in this example. So we could say carbon dioxide has a greater diffusion rate. We could also inversely say that the ribosome here has a lower diffusion rate because its molecular weight is so much larger. So to sum up this slide, the higher the molecular weight, the lower the diffusion rate and vice versa. So that's our first factor. Our second one, along with the other two that we're going to see, are all direct relationships, meaning when one thing goes up, the other goes up. So they're associated with the same direction you could think about it. And the second factor is what's called the concentration gradient. So before we get into how a change in concentration gradient affects the diffusion rate, let's first define what a concentration gradient is. It's a physical state in which the concentration of a solute or particle differs between two points in space. And normally when we're talking about two points in space, we mean opposing sides of a membrane, such as inside the cell versus outside the cell. And so this line in the middle of our box here represents the plasma membrane. 
And so what you see is for these dots, there's a differing amount of these on each side of the membrane. And when there's a different amount, that implies a different concentration, and therefore we have a concentration gradient, a state in which the concentration differs. Okay? So in this first example right here, on the left side of this membrane, we have 10 particles. So this could be some concentration of 10, okay? just arbitrarily speaking. On the right side, we have four particles. So this is a concentration of four. All right? And so we know from diffusion, that being movement from high to low, that the direction of diffusion is going to be from left to right, because we have a higher concentration on the left side and a lower concentration on the right. So the net diffusion of these red particles will be from left to right. But let's change this situation just slightly. Let's increase the concentration gradient. Let's make a higher concentration gradient. We're going to leave the particles on the right side the same number over here. But I'm going to add eight more particles to this left side. And the ones I'm adding are the ones in blue. And if you count these, you'll see I added eight of them. So now we have 18 particles on the left side and still four on the right. Up here on the top, there was a difference in six. Now there's a difference in 14. So therefore, I have increased the concentration gradient. And we're still going to have net diffusion from left to right here because that's from high concentration to low concentration. But the diffusion rate will actually be greater down here. So one way we could think about this is the greater the discrepancy or difference between both sides of the membrane in terms of concentration, the faster the rate of diffusion. I could further increase this concentration gradient by, let's say, raising this number on the left side to 25. Or I could drop it from 4 to 2 on the right side. Either one of those cases would increase the concentration gradient, and we would also observe an increase in the rate of diffusion. So that's our second factor. If we increase the concentration gradient, we increase the diffusion rate. Vice versa is also true. If we decrease the concentration gradient, we decrease the diffusion rate. Okay? These are directly proportional. The third factor we're going to discuss is what's called the surface area to volume ratio. And this is kind of a confusing topic. Um, what I'm going to do to illustrate this is an activity that you'll see in a lot of anatomy labs. I've got three cubes here of, of increasing size. The first one is the smallest one, and it has a side length of 0.5 centimeters. Okay? This one in the middle is larger. It has a side length of 1 centimeter, and the one on the right side, the biggest one, has a side length of 2 centimeters. Of course, they're not necessarily drawn to scale. I want to calculate two things, and then I'm going to determine the surface area to volume ratio, and then I'll explain what that means. Now I want to calculate surface area. When I do this for a cube, what I'm essentially going to do is take the side length and square it, so say 0.5 times 0.5, and then whatever I get for that answer, I'm going to multiply by 6 because there's 6 equal faces of the cube. Take my word for it, but you'll actually get for the small cube a surface area of 1.5 square centimeters. For the intermediate cube, it's going to be a surface area of 6 square centimeters, and for the large one, 24 square centimeters. If I want to find the volume of the cube, I just take the side length and cube it. That means 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. And when you do this for the small cube, you'll get a volume of 0.125 or 1 8 cubic centimeters. For this one, you'll have a volume of 1 cubic centimeter. And for the large one, it'll be 8 cubic centimeters. Now I have my surface areas and I have my volumes for each of these three cubes. To find the surface area to volume ratio, that essentially means taking the surface area number for each cube and divide by its corresponding volume. So for the first one, what I would do is I'd take 1.5 and divide by 0.125. When you do this, you get a value of 12. For the second cube, I take 6 divided by 1 and I get 6. And for the large cube, 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. So what do we see here? Well, the smaller cube, or smallest, I should say, has the largest surface area to volume ratio, whereas the largest cube actually has the smallest surface area to volume ratio. Now here's the key. Generally speaking, 
a larger surface area to volume ratio increases diffusion rate. So the highest rate of diffusion is going to be seen in structures that have a larger surface area to volume ratio. What that also means is that if you want to maximize the diffusion rate, you really need to increase the surface area as much as possible for the given shape or the given cell or whatever it happens to be. And the reason why increasing surface area to volume increases diffusion rate is because there's more space or area for absorption of nutrients, let's say, per the given size of the cell. This is pretty observable when you look at this structure right here. So this is something that you won't see until you probably take anatomy two. This is actually in the small intestines. And in the small intestines, that's where nutrients are absorbed after you eat them. They have to be absorbed into the blood. Well, think about this. In the small intestine, we have these finger-like projections that go up and down, up and down, up and down. And what that does is it increases the surface area available for absorption. Think about it like this. If instead of having these finger-like projections, you just had a flat piece that kind of just runs where my mouse is going, you just had a flat piece, yeah, you'd have some surface area. Um, if you increase the total volume and had the flat piece extend all the way up here, so it just looked like a giant cube, then you would still have about the same surface area for absorption. But by having this go up and down, up and down with these finger projections that are actually called microvilli, as you'll see much later, this actually increases the surface area while not really appreciably changing the volume very much. Okay, And so what you're going to find is, particularly in A&P2, this is where we see most of it, but there's a lot of structures that attempt to maximize their surface area, and that allows them to have a faster rate of diffusion. Because we have to have things proceed at a rate that supports life. If it doesn't proceed fast enough, the organism might not survive or they may not live as well. So we gotta have maximized surface area here for absorption of nutrients. We can also observe this in the alveoli of the lungs, which are the sites of gas exchange for oxygen and CO2. Those surface areas are also maximized through a different effect. Now, we're gonna focus on one more factor that affects diffusion rate, and it's actually heat. And I'm gonna really just highlight this point right here. Heat or greater temperature increases diffusion rate. So when particles are moving around in a medium, so this could be ions or glucose molecules floating around in a cell, um, it could be anything. If they were to have a higher temperature, if the solution had a higher temperature, the rate of diffusion would increase. And this has to do with an increase in the particle's kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and the best way to increase kinetic energy is to increase the temperature. So when you increase the temperature of a solution, the particles in it start moving faster. And when the particles move faster, that increases their rate of movement and therefore increases their rate of diffusion. What we're actually going to do right now is take a look at an animation, and hopefully you'll get a good understanding of how heat increases the diffusion rate. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I used this animation in a previous video to discuss with you what Brownian motion is. But here I'm going to use it to demonstrate what happens when we increase the heat, or we could say increase the temperature, and its effect on diffusion rate of particles. As you can see, I've got six large particles here, and they are diffusing at a pretty slow rate throughout this medium. Um, we can also visualize all the other particles here that are much smaller, and what we can see with these particles is that because they're smaller, they have a greater diffusion rate, which makes sense given what we talked about in the start of the video, that molecular weight varies inversely with diffusion rate. But relatively speaking, they're all moving very slow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the energy of this system. And what this is really going to do is it's going to model what would happen if I increase the temperature. So if I increase the temperature of this entire system, every single particle, whether it's these small gray ones or the large colored ones, they're going to have their kinetic energy increased. We call the kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So when I raise the temperature or heat it, as we'll say, 
the kinetic energy of the particles goes up and their diffusion rate will increase. So let me raise this to approximately 50%. And what you see now is the particles are moving much faster than they were at the start of the video. Okay? That's because I increased the temperature by heating, let's say, that increased the kinetic energy and now they diffuse faster. Let me raise it up to maximum energy. And so now these particles are moving pretty much the fastest they're gonna do in this animation. So the key here with heat is if I raise the temperature of the system, so the temperature of the particles, they move faster. So if you increase temperature, you increase diffusion rate. Likewise, if I decrease the temperature, I decrease diffusion rate. So I've lowered the temperature to the lowest possible setting here, and now the particles are diffusing the slowest that we'll see in this animation. So hopefully this makes sense. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the factors that affect diffusion rate. And we have four of them. We have molecular weight, the concentration gradient, the surface area to volume ratio, and last we have heat. And what we saw was that molecular weight and diffusion rate were inverse of each other. So increasing molecular weight actually lowered the diffusion rate, but all other three of these were a direct relationship. So a larger concentration gradient increases diffusion rate. A greater surface area to volume ratio increases diffusion rate, and then adding heat or increasing the temperature increases diffusion rate. The only inverse one was molecular weight. And if you learn it that way, that can help you tremendously when you're studying for an exam. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.